or break. Make it yours. <sighs> hey, it's Group B's Dark Horse Galatasaray gearing up to take on a surging Cloud9 as both teams vie for their spot at the top of the standings. I am going to caveat that, of course, uh, with the fact that Galatasaray dropped their first game of the day. And so while for many they were uh, in unexpected 2-0 coming out of day one, maybe brought down to earth a little bit. And Goldberg, I think one of the big questions will be how do they recover from that very first loss that they were handed? I think it's easy to recover from it because some of the mistakes were quite clear in that game. They didn't really get to play the game that we have come to know in Galatasaray for at this World's Championship. We did not see the same prevalence coming out from their solo laners in terms of the priority they actually got towards their lanes. And once the solo laners started to get shot down, well, that's really where they started to lose control of the entirety of the map. It just never felt like Galatas arrive in the first game against the Tenacious Focus Me uh, were on the uh, driving factor, really. Right, Kaizen will remember that it was, uh, you know, an early dive or an early skirmish down in the bot lane with a TP disadvantage that Galatasaray actually chose to take. And so perhaps if they're able to kind of shore up a few of those uh, missed decisions, misplays, uh, for lack of a better word, that maybe they stand a bit better of a chance against Cloud9. Yeah, and what I'd like to see them do is rewind the clock back to yesterday. Go back to Balulu on champions that can roam, like the Rise, like the TF. Look for team fighting picks for crazy, like the Kennen I thought looked really good. And perhaps the most important part, considering how proactively they play and how engage heavy they are, is getting Zerg Sting on a champion that can do that at the push of a button, like the Bard or the Rakan. So I want to see them go back to what I thought was their best look tournament which is roaming and initiation and it's like if you just looked at the lower third as well while Kaizen was talking about it wins in champions like rise like twisted fate losses in champions like a seer hmm, I wonder what the difference is between these champions it's almost like two of them hmm, I don't know has priority to get out on the map roam and enable a top laner like crazy that Kaizen is talking about I think that specifically is going to be incredibly important when you're going up against a guy like perks who's adapted this exact style himself right yeah let's take Take that into account right there, Kaizen. Yesterday in an interview, Perks himself said, hey, I'm Roman now. I'm not even laning. So, you know, do, <laughs> do Galatasaray have what it takes to either stack up against him, control him, contain him, you know, outmaneuver him? Where does the answer lie up against a star like Perks? I don't know if they have what it takes, but I know their best chance is to just try to match him with the rooms. Uh, I think it's actually good for them that Perks is saying, hey, I'm not going to be this 1v1 player, although maybe it's a bait, because uh, I wouldn't want to be trying to win lane versus Perks. I would rather focus on what I think Galatasaray does well, which is having Balulu look to support the side lane. So whatever Perks can do, he needs to think I can do better. Well, the classic, uh, you know, rely on what you're good at, not what your opponent is good at. And, uh, and we'll see if that can come to fruition but if we do talk about what cloud nine is good at i'm gonna bring the conversation back to fudge across two different games we've seen two very different looks out of this guy so if i were in the coaching position opposite cloud nine i don't know how i would approach this champion select you know it's interesting because you know it it's two different styles in terms of the champions he was playing right in the first game he was on the aurelia where he completely took over the game against that nation focus me then the second time around he's on a weak side duty champion like the malphite what does he do he plays at ap he he becomes this frontliner that just takes over the game in a different way instead where he just Shown away the opponent. I think no matter the game we've seen from FUT so far, it's been a game where he's been the one in control. Um, and it's going to be really exciting, not only to see how the mid laners influence the top lane matchup, but also how the top laners fares out against each other because FUT has been so reliant alone, but crazy. We've really only seen him do well with the resources. So how these two top laners are going to collide and specific, specifically when we reach the draft, it's going to be super interesting. I think one other thing, one final thing to consider, Kaizen, is the way that that Cloud9 victory uh, came about earlier today. They had very solid control and a big lead, but even Fudge said himself, we got a little ahead of ourselves, and that's kind of classic Cloud9, the over-aggression and giving their opponents opportunities to counter them. And so I think for them today, it's going to be about approaching it in a more controlled way and starting to show us that cleanliness and consistency that we want to see out of the play-in teams that might join groups. Absolutely. Look, I think Cloud9 is the best team in this group, 
but they can bleed. And we, when they bleed, it's because they accidentally <laughs> cut themselves by tripping <laughs> over the rock. Right? So I think what we need from Cloud9 is just focus on having as polished of the game as possible. I think if you're confident and you know you're the better team, you don't need to go for these crazy aggressive plays where you're diving people under a tower with multiple ults after your first ult misses. Just look for clean play that sets you up confidently for the rest of the playing stage. Avoid those self-inflicted wounds. Well, also, the first episode of the new Spotify exclusive podcast, Riff Reaction, hosted by Travis Gafford and Emily Rand, is out now. Releasing every Wednesday, they'll be covering trending news in the world of Lull Esports. Plus, fans have the chance to join the conversation with interactive polls and Q&A. But for now, let's hand it back over to Pastry and Mark Z for the call. Hello and welcome back, everybody. Boy, oh boy, Mark Z, we've somehow arrived in the final game of the day here for Day 2 and Play-Ins. I was down with that Spotify yeah. uh, podcast. I still hear Travis was in it. Then I was uh, like, oh, get me out of there. Unlucky. Emily Rant's great, but yeah, that another Travis yeah. guy. Yeah. Medium. At least we have a great game to talk That's about. That's true. Today. We have a great game here. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this feels like a bit of the uh, hype matchup that we're going to get at the start of the day. Then Galatas Sarai dropped their game uh, in the first one against DFM. So it, it's a little up in the air about how good each of these teams are. And this is a great test for them now against C9, who maybe looks like the most consistent team. I mean, they've only played two games. So this is a chance to see where they're going to be at. But this is the last match for Galatas Sarai. So you want to end on a positive note. Um, because you can potentially still get out first in this group, depending on if you can hand Cloud9 a loss here. Yeah, definitely have to start there. Uh, it's not going to be easy <laughs> going 2-2. Two two. So going to need to be the 3 win here up against C9. Of course, they'll, they'll still be fine even if they do lose here. Have plenty of opportunities. And I'm sure tomorrow will be filled with uh, many, many fun tiebreaker scenarios that luckily I don't get to work out. That's somebody else's job. Thank you. God. Yeah, we just get told to cast them, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, I mean, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think you heard the, the analyst test talking about draft and how important that's going to be. And I feel like that's something that has played Galatas Horai a little bit, even in their domestic games, uh, where they made it more difficult for themselves. They, they crushed pretty, pretty consistently there. But there were times where they took too many threats, not enough utility in their draft, not enough stability. And I think you saw that aspect of their drafting come up in their most recent game against DFM where it's like all winning lane champions but like don't actually do anything together um, and as soon as it went wrong it went really wrong so I, I heard uh, you know Goldberg talking about wanting to bring back some of that playmaking in the mid lane uh, and I'm, I'm totally down for that and I, I hope we get to see that yeah, I think, uh, you know, Baloo's TF looking real good. In general, like, both these mid laners feel at their best right now when they're affecting their side lanes. Obviously, mm -hmm. we've seen uh, Cloud9 play through Fudge, whether it's uh, Aurelia or Malphite, which is pretty impressive given the difference in those champions. <laughs> and I thought that either of these players also can't play carries. They certainly can take over a game. They can be the ones taking resources, but uh, maybe it's a meta, maybe it's a team thing. They are certainly playing more to their teams right now. And I think the, the Fudge callout's a big one. Uh, he has been such a huge component of the win for Cloud9 so far as, uh-oh, headset's coming off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Pace here. Are we feeling you and me? I don't know. Maybe. It's podcast it's time. It's a little podcast. There hey. we go. <laughs> oh, no, it's a huddle. Never mind. Well, I mean, the huddle's got to be for something. What are we having for dinner tonight after we 3-0? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that what they're talking about? Already lined it up. They probably already know. Jack's got the place lined up. They got, they got smiles. Nice well, Fudge doesn't look as happy. He doesn't like the restaurant they're going to. Yeah. Maybe he's like, doesn't want to play Malphite again. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you had enough. Yeah. He's yeah, trying to he, play unique champion every like, game. You, 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 we, we picked you a tank, so you would play tank, and you didn't build tanks. So we're picking you another <laughs> tank this time, and you can't do anything else. What? I don't know what's a bigger tank than Malphite, though. Mm. What's a champion you can't build anything else on but the tank? Owen? Shen? Maokai? Maokai, no, Maokai you can for sure. Yeah, I think Owen, you can get away a little bit. Like, yeah? Like, like Poppy is, is like maybe oh. going to go full AD Poppy. No, no, Poppy. don't. But Poppy is a risk. I feel like you're inviting uh, potential uh, shenanigans. Yeah, definitely. Galatas Rai looking more locked in. Uh, that was Arian, if anyone recognized him. Uh, he coached them, former CLG coach, been around TCL, back to NA, back to TCL. So uh, really cool to see him cropping up again, leading these guys to another victory. He won both his splits that he's been in the TCL. Uh, so a pretty impressive resume that he's building for himself and hoping to add more to it here at Worlds. We'll see if they can get it done. Again, this is not a done deal. I think coming into today, actually, for me, this was the matchup that, like, most likely determined who got first in this group. Um, that is definitely 
not the sentiment now, given how good Dead FM looked in their win today, and uh, the fact that these two teams aren't meeting, you know, are still undefeated. So there's a lot of League of Legends still left to play here. Obviously, Cloud9 will give themselves the best opportunity by staying undefeated. That's the obvious stuff in any tournament. You keep winning and you don't lose. Chances are you'll do pretty well. Yeah. Uh, but uh, sadly, that is a lot easier said than done, as Kiana and Aurelia are going to get banned away. Talon also getting banned away. So the Kiana Talon. Fun times from day one have all been erased. Nobody wants to play against the two champions that haven't lost yet here in play-ins. At least in Lucian Rise, these teams have done their homework. Markers are already into pick number one. Yeah, a lot of jungler focus uh, with the talent ban as well coming in from Cloud9. So gonna have to be pushed down a little bit further in their pools than we've we've seen from from these junglers so far. Uh, you know, Blabber had just the Kiana and the Lee. And then for uh, Mojito, it was those two plus the talent. So literally both of them have to play new things. J4 first pick would be bold. Uh, I know people are liking him a little bit more in the current meta with the lethality items and stuff. So a very early pick though. Uh, so many junglers in pro play will talk your ear off about how, how much they hate playing Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so many champions that just make his life miserable, stunning him out of his EQ combo, flaying him out of it. There's all these things, that with even mobility, you know, being able to hop out of his ult damage and stuff like that. Like. So many of those things make it annoying to play, and one of the reasons it's often not first picked, even when it's strong. Uh, but with how many bands there are, uh, Cloud9 want to reach for it. It also might not be Bobby's champion. Have already Fair seen enough. Lane Jarvan. That is something that was kind of creepy around. I mean, Trinity Mid also is apparently a thing. So uh, you never know these days. But giving up MF for J4, I mean, MF is almost always picked on this side because. He's typically, she's not good enough, quite good enough to first pick, but he's definitely good enough to take what she's open if you're on red side. But I'm curious to see kind of how this drop shakes out, because Zin was available as well. That is going to be Mojito's champion here. We'll be fine up against the Javan if that is Blabber's champion, and we'll likely be fine against whatever else a Blabber might ring out from the jungle. Uh, yeah, I'm just surprised to see. I'm still like processing yeah, the, the Jarvan when it's like Zin's up. You know, we've seen Blabber play Zin plenty. Um, decently strong enough pick that you can take it first and be fine. Uh, so, not the case though, and we get the Ezreal Leona bot lane, a staple in the meta. Leona runs around the map, Ezreal's happy to play weak side, and you go try and make plays. Yep, this is becoming the go to for Sven and Vulcan. Uh, it seems like they are not wanting to take, I mean, they're not getting opportunities to pick MF if they do want it in most of their games, and Vulcan has been very good on the Leona leaving lane often, and Sven, of course, we know, very good Ezreal player, and uh, if this is a strategy Cloud9 want to run, if this is the way they want to approach the 2v2s up against the MF, which is basically to ignore them, then this is a pretty good way to go about it. Yeah, and I like the Thresh answer, too, into the uh, Leona, because for a live playing MF, you know, sometimes you just get alt after alt dropped on your face, you know, sometimes Malphite flying at you, G J4, and you, you just want to shoot the enemy target. You're not that actually mobile, um, so having the reposition from the Lantern helps, as well as in lane. Uh, Thresh can be rather annoying for Leona if you can get her out of her E, just play that. Um, and you can, you can punish if the Leona can get trapped in lane phase. You know, that that's what you're trying to do with this combination. It's less about 100% all ins and more about controlling the lane phase with your double range matchup. Yep, so no move MF this time, but I do like this combination a bit better for the, the reasons respect you Malphite stated. Man. <laughs> <laughs> LeBlanc and Malphite getting taken away from Herx and Fudge, respectively. Gwen also banned away from Crazy. That's been pretty consistent yeah. against them. I think he has had zero opportunities so far this tournament's picket, but definitely noted uh, a lot of phase two Gwen bans here. In general, up against Galatasaray, so what is the final ban here for Cloud9? It is Camille continuing to keep the top lane champions uh, yeah. lowered. And again, we have many questions to ask ourselves about the Cloud9 solo lanes, but for now, we'll answer ones about GS. Going with the Jace. Um, going back to it after a pretty rough performance on it the first time around. Not like he played terribly or anything, but the game just blew up so quickly that, you know, he TP for lane, uh, try and get his advantage, the other Urgot, TP for kills, and then he's like, well, now there's a played steel caps got in my lane. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully a better time around for Crazy. Uh, I do like when he has some playmaking tools. I, I felt like when I'm watching his, his VODs, he was really good about moving around the map and transferring his pressure and not just being the AFK pusher when he has a lead. Oh my goodness, it's happening, Mark. <laughs> Shredomir mid, all right. I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about it when we get into the game a little bit, uh, pairing it with the Talia. So a lot of map mobility, I think for this entire team to get over there and, and try and make side lane plays. Uh, Trinomir, you know, also has map mobility, not necessarily trying to move around the map too much in, in the early game, but especially in the mid to late game, uh, the ability to collapse on side lanes and make plays happen is pretty huge. Silas again, though, 
uh, you know, creeps into another draft. Looks pretty good here with the selection of ultimates yeah. you have available to you. I, I like it. I mean, I haven't seen the, the Talia uh, alt. <laughs> or, or, not, excuse me, Talia. Uh, the the trigger alt okay, interaction yeah. with, with the Silas. But I assume it's just going to be hilarious to watch an unkillable Silas <laughs> flinging his chains around. So, uh, but Lulu, like you said, ha has uh, the ability to have a huge impact in this game. I am very curious how this shakes out because this is a pretty big departure from what Cardinal have shown us already. And it's always an interesting question. Like, again, in a format where you are trying to get as many wins as possible, that is obviously the part of least resistance into the main stage of Worlds. Uh, you do want, you value consistency. And I'm not saying should be it's inconsistent, but when you've shown like a pretty similar look across your games, departing from that is very interesting to me. But perhaps you're trying to throw your opponent off guard, right? That's the trade-off. Is like, do I think they're less practiced against this and we're good enough at it to beat them? Or do I just want to play the stuff I know we know because we can outskill them? Yeah, I'm also wondering how much is, like there's, there's a lot of things to consider. Yes. Is it them trying to flex and show champion pools out there feeling pretty good at the 2-0 position? Was it something they saw in the draft where like, okay, there's not a ton of lockdown CC yet? Um, and then, you know, if the support's not going to bring the CC and they have Zen, you know, like there's not really much else that's going to be bringing it probably. And so they, they felt like they could take it there, especially after seeing the Jace. Uh, maybe they're, 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 they'd seen enough of what they wanted to see whenever they're going to lock in the, the Trinomir that they decided this was the time to go for it. And, uh, you know, Talia's kind of a cool one. It's been nice to see her rotating back into the meta. I love that every change they make to try and make her a better mid laner, and she just always pops up back in the jungle. Uh, but Blabber, this is a champion he is very well practiced on, so this could be quite a spicy invade here. Balulu is uh, under the gun. Yeah, the fact that they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's come early. Balulu falls to flash away. <laughs> that was a, quite the high octave you hit there, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a nice invade. They didn't have anyone marking mid because uh, they had their bot lane actually in bot going for the the river or the, the ward in lane. And so that allows C9 to sneak in unseen. And they get the free flash out of Balulu, not how you want to start the game for him. Um, that said, and this is my problem with... Trinomir, I was, uh -huh. I, was on, I was on Hotline League last night ranting about <laughs> not wanting to cast Trinomir, and I almost made it through the day, uh, and I didn't get there. Now, we did get not the triple Reju bead start from the Trinomir, mm -hmm. which is where I, I normally hate it even more. Uh, there's so many champions throughout League of Legends history that have just been the most uninteractive garbage mid laners, 13-pot <laughs> Katarina, 13-pot Mordecai as you go back in the day, and this just like gives me flashbacks to those where I'm like, wow, you just took a lane off the map for me to cast. There's yeah. nothing to say here. Yeah. Um, a little bit more interactive with the D-Shield start and the double melee matchup, maybe. Um, and, and maybe we can see some more action there, especially with the flash blow now. I will say, uh, very on brand for Perks. I believe that is King Shindamir, uh, as far as Lane Kingdom, Kingdom, here we go. Which is, yeah, very on brand for Perks, which you love to see. Mahito, though, starting on the blue side. Oh my goodness, it's already happening in the bottom side. Zerg Sting is in trouble once again. Does get ignited, but there is no additional pressure. Although, looks close. Yeah, man, Zven just threading the needle on that shot, poking Zergsting a little bit lower. I actually thought that trade was okay with the, the biscuits that he had, um, being able to heal up, and trading Ignites reduces some of the all-in threats, so you, you can actually harass a little bit harder with the double range matchup. But Zven landing that last Q actually gives such an advantage in HP bars that it's just like flame phase over now. We talked yeah. about trying, not totally over, but in terms of trying to lock down the Leona, like get ready to see some, some map movement probably. And it feels really good for Ezreal once you get the push because it's easier to continue hitting your, your skill shots without as many minions in the way. Yeah, definitely want to try and Permalock your opponent under the tower as Perks is just taking away the mini Raptor. When I talked about those annoying champions like the 13 pop Mordekaiser and stuff, they start stealing people's chickens and stuff. Like, man, Perks is starting the, that stuff early on. Level three already, got the lane pushing in. I mean, Trinib kind of plays the same in just about any lane. Uh, just hit the minions and don't stop. Hit the enemy champion sometimes if they walk close enough to you. If you get in trouble, spin around. If you get in a lot of trouble, hit W and heal. Yeah. That's kind of it. That's the champion. <laughs> it's what you do after that that really matters. But the landing phase ain't that, ain't that interesting. Yeah, and I mean, like, yeah. oh, here we go. All right, now gank. we're getting spicy. Plava lining it up here potentially for a gank, but he's going to back away. Yeah, I saw the, the, the movement in by Lulu that maybe without his spell available, they would go for it. But uh, a little bit more focused on getting the Scuttle Crab finished off for Blabber. Maybe he'll take on a look at it with the waves pushing into Perks. You see Perks trying to hold the wave away from there. Want to set something up, 
Tryndamere just doesn't have many tools to help out an actual gank attempt, and especially someone like Talia who really benefits from a lockdown setup to get her flick off, that it makes it so much easier. And the slow that Tryndamere might get if he chickens them is just is just not the same. Ah, uh, what about Leona? That Leona seems like a pretty good setup CC. Again, no flash does get slowed down. Balulu is going to get himself over the wall, though. It should be A-OK, -okay, but Blever finds the flash, flicks them back, and then it's going to be first blood to Perks. How dare I slander the chicken slow? <laughs> it sets up the flash followed by Blabber getting first blood there. Well done, and Balulu gets punished. Not much he could do there. I think that was just really clever wave manipulation by Perks as well as the rest of Cloud9. Punishing after a smart level one, Balulu's forced to TP back to lane, and uh, you heard the analyst just talking about how important he is for this roster, and this is not the start they needed. Yeah, loves to see paying off the level one, right? And even like what you were mentioning before, like the early level one 2v2 kind of led into Vulcan getting unlocked, and then they paid it back knowing that they didn't have Flash, and it's just really nicely coordinated there for Cloud9. That does mean that Fudge has been left alone on an island, and Jarvan isn't having a particularly fun time right now, 1v1 isolated versus the Jace. But hey, Fudge can play weak side, he can play strong side, and Perks can play Trindamir. Yeah, here you see that that sick game <laughs> the chicken flip. I mean, Blabber did all the work. <laughs> yeah, Blabber, I mean, Perks did a lot of work to get the way from the setup. That's true. And, and you know, it, it was about Blabber coming in and, you know, eating the, the rewards a little bit. Uh, and like you said, it's it's just a, a tough situation for Fudge and top lane actually going airy and focusing um, more about the fact like you're not going to get any grass procs off. You're not going electrocute and trying to do tons of all ins. He's, I saw him farming a lot with E. Uh, so very focused on just surviving the harass from the chase and being able to go in later. Nice play there out of Zerg Sting, but Zven following up that Zenith League with a free W. Getting a little bit of damage down, but Vulcan taking some in return. Not too bad at the end of it all, but it does seem like Vulcan is still calibrating. Well, Sven, there is a little bit down on CS. Uh, Vulcan leaving does again isolate the Ezreal in the 2v1, so Sven is probably expected to lose in some form. He's going to try and catch some back here as again. Zergsin continues to be a magnet for these Mystic shots. Yeah, I mean, Sven's Ezreal's looking really good right now through this game. Uh, and you saw that play interaction like I was talking about, about why you often like the Thresh into Leona. Um, and they'll probably keep the CS lead now that the bot lane has stabilized. You know, summoners are coming back up. The flash will be up for Xerxes soon. They already have the ignites. As hold on, Vulcan in there does have ignite again. Aftershock's gonna proc. Q's gonna get dodged. Everything's a okay, but no all in there for Cloud9. Blabber is here in the area, but of course Mahito is down here as well, covering for the team. Alive getting aggressive, but again going back in. Nice play, Ignite is down. Zergsting trying to make him pay, but Sven once more does have the auto attacks, and now Alive is going to try and get out of there. But I think he's dead as Blava will finish him off. Electrocute's going to proc, and now Mojito is the next target. A great flash out as Sven is going to try and keep him alive. Oh, no. And that's actually enough to kind of, and that is an absolute tragedy for Galatasaray as Sven collects it all. Cloud9 playing it risky, going in, trying to get that timing window before Zergsting got the flash. They were trying so hard to set that play up. Looked like an overforce at times, but able to dodge out on the hook back. I think that was the critical moment there. And from then, the both junglers collapsing, just playing it a little bit cleaner for Cloud9. And uh, we return to Perks, farming in mid lane. Again, this is this is the trend to be a lane state. Yeah. I mean, when you're not trying to set up for a gank when your opponent has flash, or doesn't have flash, excuse me, you're again, you're hitting the minions until they die. And, and he did a good job, you know, shadowing like he might roam down here. Uh, so this is after uh, Leona already lost her flash on the first attempt. And you see how risky it is here. Um, you know, at this point, they, they're already in a, a decent spot with Blabber getting there first. They get the easy kill on the Zerg thing, and then uh, Vulcan does a good job staying in the main wave, making it a little bit difficult for Mojito to find a way in and, and giving it a lane for Sven to land some of these Mystic shots. And then once the flash comes through and, and Mojito has no way to follow up, it's just too easy. I, I don't know if there's a miscommunication that Sven didn't have flash or he wasn't sure, but going for that, uh, you know, was, was just trying to make the best of a bad situation. And you see how happy the Cloud9 <laughs> staff are. <laughs> I, I love their all. Obviously, it threw us such a nice play out of Sven. Vincent's face, especially that manager, was choice. So, uh, <laughs> I think he's going to get memes into oblivion, at least by the C9 social media stuff, as Blabber is just making it sing in every possible lane. Fudge down in CS, but calls the juggler for an easy one. Uh, Cloud9 are rolling today, looking really good. Get another gank off up in the top side. This is what the J4 was picked for. You survive the lane phase as best you can. At six, the Talia comes flying in out of nowhere, and you have to land the kill. It, it's a more difficult gank to pull off than you think. Uh, Crazy didn't end, actually end up flashing anything, so I think he just accepted he was dead to rights at that point. Um, and a, a nice setup by Fudge.
Yeah, nicely done there, as uh, Rift Herald's going to be the extra ward on top of that gank. Galatasaray trying to trade some back, though. Finally have an overload here in the bottom side of the map. Is the Jungle is actually maybe going to look for more here, but Sven, very nice scouting maneuver there with the True Shot Barrage, is going to see them. Again, they know Blabber's top, so they want to try and punish, but Sven sniffs that out and shuts it down immediately. Yeah, well done by Galatasaray, grabbing the one thing that they can on the map, which is that red buff. A little bit of a Constellation prize, but still not feeling great. 5-0, already a 2,000 gold advantage in Cloud9's favor. Mahito, though, going to grab that Scuttle Crab, and that's going to be the Dragon take here. Cloud9 probably knew they were giving this up for this trade, so they won't be too upset, but uh, at least doing, you know, making the trades you have to make when you're a little bit behind here. 2,000 gold or so up for Cloud9. Going to go ahead and take that Dragon, though, for themselves and maybe start that ball rolling, but it's looking tough here. Blabber, I mean, Sven's outplay on the bottom side has, has set him up beautifully, but Blabber quietly is starting to be everywhere, and that is... A bad time against Talia. <laughs> I mean, this is when Blabber shines the most. Is once he gets leads in games, he's so good about being aggressive and snowballing those. That's why Olaf is one of his best champions, is because Olaf is a bit of a stat stick, and when he gets ahead, he just crushes you. Uh, and here he is in this game getting ahead, and Talia can blow people up. So we'll have to see if he can keep snowballing this lead. And uh, Perks of Donate is level 8. Uh, you mentioned the ulti interaction. We might get to find out in a moment, but uh, potentially get set up a dive in another lane. I don't think you want to dive the Silas with the stolen Trindamir ulti, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it sounds a little uh, sounds hilarious. unlikely to work, but <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe you just, you know, redive it. Here you see the struggles that Fudge has largely been having off screen. I mean, Crazy is doing what he can with the map exploding around him more or less. You know, he keeps pushing up aggressively. He built this big wave up. You know, you would want your jungler to be up there on the timing window to potentially threaten a dive, and, and they're starting to do it now. But because of the dragon situation, you know, the rest of his team wasn't initially there. Now Blabber's in range to cover. Yeah, and Mahito is just going to straight face check this to Leah. Blabber's going to see it. The damage is going to be done and doesn't even use the ulti. But a 2v2 still continues. Blue is going to steal the J4 ulti. Looks to dunk Fudge and takes him out. Now Fudge in trouble, trying to dance around there. Trapped in his own ultimate and crazy is going to pick off the second. All right, well done by Galatasaray. Like I said, Crazy is the one power point in the map that you can try and make things happen. Balulu does have to sacrifice his mid wave and, and kind of make that play without priority, but you got to do something to throw C9 off their game plan right now, and, and getting that kill is, is exactly what you need to do. Perk spinning away. Does respect uh, the potential follow through here. Also knows, notes that Alive and Zerg Sting are missing, so it doesn't want to commit to any sort of 1v1, which I think you'd be okay in, but it's obviously not going to be a 1v1 for very long. It is nice, though, to see Galatasaray recognizing where they can go. Slow connects their Vulcan, flashes in instantly. Sven's going to pick up a sitter and takes down the misfortune. And out on the wrong side of the rift, going to have to dance his way out into his coffin, perhaps, as Mojito flashes over the wall. Sven, though, is going to flash out of the way. The Rift Herald's been summoned, and Sven is still out of there. Trying to make it happen. Arcane shifts onto the blast going, and my goodness, he's done it. Gives him a thumbs up on the exit out. Blabber sets up the wall to make sure he's safe, and Cloud9 can seemingly do no wrong. Sven is on fire. Yeah, Sven and Vulcan looking good. This is the struggle we were talking about for Alive, playing MF into the Leona lane. Uh, you try and drop your ult for wave clear, and that's just the clear go sign for them to jump on top of you. It was a little bit of like, hey, who's baiting who? Because the rest of Galatasaray was collapsing on that play, and they did find the kill into Vulcan, but they gave up so many resources to make that happen. Crazy TP down, Balulu roamed again after already just finishing another roam. So his, he's starting to fall a little bit behind as well as the turret dropping. And, and Cloud9, despite it being a one for one, come out pretty far ahead on that play. And uh, you know, Sven, looking pretty good. We'll watch just why again here as we have the new Axe Fact replay. And like you mentioned, Alive just can't really do much here. And Vulcan instantly goes in. Yeah, nice combo by Sven, uh, layering all that damage in, getting it out quickly. And then here, you know, he kind of realizes, like, all right, sorry, Vulcan, dude, I'm, I'm out of here. And well done by Caldo. Sorry, I try and collapse onto him, but uh, nice blast cone to help keep Sven alive, make sure that he's able to get out of there. And then uh, a wall by Blabber as well. Just to make sure. Maybe he didn't need it, but better safe than sorry. Also, in the midst of all that, we noted Blabber dropped the Herald. It was mid lane, which gave Perks not the first tower of the game, and Cloud9 this 3,000 gold lead. That will be cut down now as Alive is going to finish off the tower. That is much needed gold for this misfortune. So that lead going to shrink by about 500, but again, Cloud9 still feeling pretty good here at the 13 minute mark, especially with Sven. And the first mythic item of this game, which was Trinity Force, by the way, has been done for a few minutes. He is like, Terrifying to behold in yeah. any lane. 
Yeah, and I like Sven. He's done the Triforce build both games that yep. he's done it versus the Doggo build where he went the Divine Sunderer. I, I feel like it's something that people still autopilot and find Sunderer a little bit too much. I thought maybe in that game, I didn't bring it up then, but maybe Doggo should, should have gone for the, the Triforce with how far ahead he was. Um, but in this game, I just don't think Sven is scared of anybody jumping on top of him realistically. It's like, okay, if. Lulu's the one guy, maybe Mojito. I'll just kite them out with like Leona and, and other people helping peel for me. So I, I think he's feeling really good and wants to maximize his DPS given how far ahead he is in this game. Yeah, at this point, you know, you, you beat them by killing them before they can kill you. And given the wall advantage, seems pretty straightforward there for Zvin. And as Vulcan is under a bit of fire, there are four people here from Galatasaray chilling in the mid lane, but they are off to the Dragon, which is why they're pushing that wave in. That is definitely the thing they can lean on right now. They have the first one, they're looking to grab the second tier. Doesn't look like Cloud9 will contest right now, but uh, you never know. But I think Cloud9 happy to lean on their gold lead here again. The second Dragon is not the one you have to worry about. It's, it's three and four that you really kind of you owe your attention. Yeah, I think for, for Cloud9, you know, it's always nice if you can do the Drake snowball as well, but here, Blabber, or excuse me, uh, Fudge has been behind for a large portion of this game. He's like, hey, I would really appreciate getting this gold back in my pocket as uh, flash forward by Zerg Sting yields nothing. Love the attempts. Unfortunately, guess wrong, right? That's basically 50 50 at that point. What, what, where he's going to juke? And now the reverse collapse as Van Trucho barrages a few people in mid, but Blue's here with the stolen Leona ult. That's going to get another shift out of Sven, but now Vulcan tied up in the lasso is going to get killed by Alive, and now it's a 5v2 for Sven and Blabber. They're going to get out of there. Looks like with the Infernal uh, map, there might have been another angle there, but Galatasaray call it off. Uh, well done by them to punish that uh, attempt of defending the mid lane turret there. They get the kills. Should probably be able to grab the turret on the tail end of it. No one's sticking around, though, actually. They're choosing to go for the Rift Herald as the prioritized objective. Um, maybe a little bit harder to grab that one. We'll see if Blabber's in the area. Blabber looking, but uh, 1v3 right now does have his flash. Ooh. Already can't commit to smite. Zerxing finds the mark, and that's an easy pick off there for Galatasaray. Right now 4v2 around this Rift Hill. That is going to belong to them, so that's an objective they like to take. Perks over here so late, but they do want to fight, apparently. Sven feeling pretty strong. Perks getting in there. Gale forces through. Gets himself hooked up. Has to pop the ulti. Fudge going to get the kill, and Perks does indeed pop Undying Rage. But Crazy's going to take down Fudge. And uh, Sven's going to fall as well as Alive is picking up so much gold. And Vulcan has to dance around three, but can't do anything in Cloud9. And ill-advised engage goes south quickly. Oh, boy. C9 making some mistakes. And Galtus Harai doing everything they can to punish. Uh, I mean, that felt like a clear sack whatever objective, you know, they decide they want. You know, Galtus Harai with the pickoff that they got felt like they earned an objective. And Cloud9 did not want to give that one up. Blabber hung around the area. Really well done by them to find those angles and, and punish that. And now, gold lead starting to close. The kill lead a lot closer, um, given that I think it started 5-0 in C9's favor. Like, this is a, a slow climb out of what was a very bad start for, for Galatasaray. Maybe they can keep making this happen. Yeah, definitely. That's the kind of thing you want to look for for them. So let's do it again here. Cloud9, I was shocked that they went in here. I, I was too. I'm like, okay, great. You're poking it. Maybe you get an exit kill. But because Perks gets hooked, it kind of forced. Hold on here. All righty. Fudge at it again. But Wolf from Blabber. Not sure what the angle was there. Maybe looking for a live at the top of the screen. But uh, it is Fudge going to have to get out of there. Does get out safely. But as you mentioned, Mark, the gold is starting to dwindle a little. At the peak of the mountain, it was 4.6k. Dipped down to about 3,500 right now. Right, and, and they grab the Rift Herald off of it as well as the Dragon. So, like, while the gold lead doesn't look like it shrunk that much, there's going to be quite the influx going in their favor here. Able to grab this one without even needing to commit the Rift Herald. Probably going to grab the second turret as well. Uh, in the meantime, you know, C9 is just saying split push mode with perks up in the top lane on Tridomere, but this is all still great trades for Galatasaray. Well done. Capitalizing on what was a mistake by Cloud9. Yeah, and I think it, even without TP, this is... Kind of tuned to me a plan A in a lot of ways. I said that his landing phase wasn't very interesting. He just runs around hitting minions, and then that's it. And then it gets more interesting later. Uh, I guess I accidentally lied. <laughs> See, post landing phase, it's also the same thing. Just, you know, Somewhere slightly else. different. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, hit a different lane. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, Cloud9 is obviously this is the part of the game plan. The Eventually, Trinomir just gets impossible for anyone to potentially deal with for the side of Galatasaray. But I think the 5v5 is not something you can ignore being better for them. I mean, Talia, 
bit of a tricky team fighter. Um, you, you can blow people up for sure, and you can pelt people with your Q, but not ideal compared to a Zin Zhao who can provide a lot more uh, utility. Um, and then Trinimir, obviously not a great team fighter. So if they stabilize and force C9 to come to them with some of this dragon stacking that they were able to grab, I think there actually is a pretty clear path back into the game for them. And I got to give a lot of credit to Zerg Sting being a, a big part of that, you know, uh, Flashing forward, trying to make plays happen, even though you know some of them came up short, he still helped find them. And then especially the the flank onto Blabber to really secure that Rift Herald. That was that was the key pickoff that he did by abusing Vision very well on the Rift Herald map. Or yep. excuse me, the uh, Infernal map. Yeah, as we noted, Zergsting does not miss often with the skill shots, and even though Vulcan kind of got him a little bit in some of the early exchanges in lane in particular, he has definitely paid it back here in the mid game. We're going to stabilize this game for Galatasaray. Again, they're in touching distance. 3,000 gold is fine. On the wall path for this third dragon is going to be the big one, but Cloud9 now starting to shift that attention over here. But even with this gold league, which isn't as big as it was before, is this enough to strong arm the other enemy team in a 5v5? I think it's definitely still in Cloud9's favor, especially with the vision control setup on their side currently. And it's a little tough for uh, Galatasaray to sneak their way in here, but. It, I, I think they really do need to force this despite the bit of a losing situation or position that they're in currently because the dragon stacking will be something that keeps Cloud9 honest in this game and not just letting Trinomere AFK split push all the time. Oh, crazy that they found a pick. Blabber going to cut him off the wall as well, but Perks tries to make it happen. Oh. Bunch over the top again. Blabber finds the flick. And Perks is taking down Crazy Mojito's low as well. Vulcan is just in the midst of the enemy team, getting it done with Leona. And Blabber's going to find the snipe with the stones as now Xerxing's forced to flash away. And Cloud9 looking at the enemy T2 turret tur like it doesn't exist, excuse me, as he will get kill number three as well. Well done by Cloud9. <laughs> find the angle, find the punish, able to grab this dragon. Uh, that was what I was talking about with the vision problem that they have for Galatasaray, that they just didn't know who was under threat. So Crazy thinks, well, I'm just holding mid lane, and that's actually the one that they choose to attack. He tries to get over the rest of his team, but Cloud9 have a lot of tools for chasing down. And after they got the initial kill, it was too easy. You can see here, he's like, all right, well, they're probably messing around the river. He doesn't expect them to be in the front trade to go over the wall. And even after he flashes towards his team, again, more follow-up from J4, an easy kill there. Mojito tried to save him, ends up in a bad position. He's trying to flash forward, find his way out of there. But at this point, it's just all chase down sequence for Cloud9. Grab the dragon from the back end of it. Yeah, and this is something that this team does very well. Like Trendemir and Israel are awesome at chasing people down. And even Blabber is just getting in there, trying to see if we can find the final few rocks. Doesn't get the fourth kill, but hey, they'll take three there. Stopping that dragon snowball. They take that health, uh, that infernal dragon for themselves, uh -oh. excuse me. And now Perks at it again. And Balloon is getting chopped to bits. And uh, oh, we're going to get to see it. Battling ultis here, unfortunately. Wait, wait, wait. 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 He didn't pop off. Wait a second. Perks, what happened? Uh, so, oh, Silas refund. is always a better version of the champion you're playing. <laughs> we saw earlier in the day where Perks was a better Amumu. Yep. And now here, Baloo is a better Trinomir than Perks. I was going to say, the difference maker is the CC that happens after, but apparently not. The difference maker is pressing clicking R. the R key. <laughs> yeah. Tough, tough one. I mean, I struggle to do that all the time. And look, it looks a bit silly, but this is actually turning into a real Baron attempt here for Galatasaray. Yeah, I, I really like this decision. Grab as much as you can for that pickoff. Alrighty, are we in the steel zone? Are we in the fight zone? We're not in the hook landing zone, unfortunately, for Zergsting, but the full time's looking good. Great ulti to out of Vulcan to cancel that, but now Balulu is on the assault once again. Vulcan gonna be the target, but Fudge in the back line is getting assaulted there. The stolen J4 ulti looking nice as Vulcan isn't dead, but that damage might be enough for them to go back, but unfortunately not feeling too healthy. Baron's regen back to full. And uh, Perk is back out on the map, so Galatasaray oh. will back away. Cloud9 dodge a bullet there. I really like the decision by Galatasaray there to force the Baron as hard as they did. Lulu was in a great flanking position, TPing back in there after resetting. And I think they just caught, got caught between doing two separate things. Alive's bullet time there was actually really smart, uh, as we'll take a look at this replay first about uh, <laughs> the, how Perks gets uh, outskilled here. There's the ult seal. Lulu pops it early. And I mean, that was relatively telegraphed. I don't feel like the, I, I, I can read this, oh, I'm trolling. I mean, 100%, that's what Perk said. <laughs> oh. you, that play was two out of five uh, face plants. Yeah, that is, uh, oh, that is, 
that's the gift for the tournament. I mean, yeah. I don't know what's going to top that. Maxwell does face right there in the middle. But oh. classic Mithy reaction. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and I mean, like, it was really funny, but like that almost was, yeah, was mean, a huge <laughs> avenue for, for them because, like I said, the MF bullet time bought so much space. If their turn was a little better or they just refocused back onto the Baron, they could have 50-50 that. And if, if you lose the Baron or you get wiped there, Suddenly the gold lead's gone. Yeah, look, it would be a lot less funny if they weren't still 5,000 gold ahead. <laughs> yeah. That goes from, like, that, that meme of the guy clapping in the chair at the movie theater, the, like, the horror face. Yeah. That's, that was the, the living embodiment of that play almost. All right, well, Cloudnet, do you have to refocus a little? Because he's going to have to refind his uh, the R key on his keyboard, but I'm it's still there, I'm sure of it. And uh, it's still obviously a threat in these side lanes, right? Like, I don't think Bolulu, even with the stolen Chindim royalty, is going to have a, a fun time up against Perks 1v1. I don't think anyone really is 1v1. And when they're bringing Vulcan down, they're able to shadow their side laners as well. Cloud9 can do a lot of a splitting in some of these side lanes here, which I think has to be the plan. Obviously, having Baron would make that quite a bit easier. Unfortunately, doesn't have access to that right now. But Cloud9 still maintaining control of this game. Even though they've had some oopsies, they haven't lost, you know, the sense of the map state that they're trying to play to. No, I mean, they, they're in a fantastic position for 1-3-1. Your Ezreal Leona lane, which maybe should have lost, actually gets ahead, which gives you a lot of space in your 1-3-1 for them to be more uh, self-sufficient to get the push on their own. And that enables Talia to go flying into these side lanes. And it's a lot harder to defend against for Galatasaray because you don't necessarily know where she's going if you don't have good vision control. And so the Leona also, with the Infernal map, has an easier path to follow the Talia wall. You don't have to make as many you know, loops around the jungle to, to try and attack one of these side lanes. So um, how well the early game went and, and the rift that we ended up getting here is great for C9's game plan. And uh, Perks is just not leaving a lane. And why should he? This is just Trindamir's home. He picked lane king of Trindamir. He is sticking at the lanes. He is, you know, as advertised here in this game, hitting the uh, inhibitor tower. And, you know, it's a, a huge threat. Hold on. I like this here. Going for the other side. Great lance in the ladder. Zerg Sting. He's going to pull him out to safety. Vulcan just lets it rip. Just let you know I can hit that shot yeah. if I need to. <laughs> and Sven still chugging along here in the mid lane, pushing things out. Dragon's up in four seconds, which is a big one. Yeah, I was going to say, do, losing two of your ultimates is a bit of a problem. I mean, Talia, less of a combat spell, but still something you want to have, potentially. Looks like Alt Strike doesn't actually want to contest this, uh, and instead rotating up to the top side to help the chase finish the push off. Perks, they're running interference. TP coming in, though. It's 4v1 right now for Fudge. Although he can't know that. Balulu coming in and Fudge going to have to give up the tower. That's fine. Not really much you can do there. Nice little rotation there out of Galatasaray. Again, keep trying to trade where they can because they knew they couldn't face check at the Dragon. Have to get out safely now though, but it looks like they will. And again, we'll see this kind of back and forth. This is very common in really open maps, right? Where at some point, uh, can't win the 1-3-1, one, one, uh, and you probably can't 5v5 given the gold deficit, but you have to at least keep training when the map is this lopsided here is I'm very surprised Zerg is going to leave. In fact, maybe they may have uh, cast a curse him into oblivion. Great flash there after the box. Perks, though, is going to slow him down, and that hook, unfortunately, is going to seal his fate. And now the Baron's back on the menu for Cloud9. Yeah, you're talking about the open map staying a little bit lazy there by Galatasaray, not all getting out at the same time. Leaves one behind, and just as a perfect layup into the Baron for Cloud9. Oh, good dunk there for Fudge. Shine his own Mahito out the stun, lands in for Volca Balulu, making it scary, but Blabber finds the smite. And now Balulu's in the midst of it all. Fudge is going to try and make his way back through. They swap positions with Vulcan. It's like old school Urgo and ulti is Sven. He's found the ace at the back of it all on Cloud9. We're going to go undefeated so far at Worlds. They blow this game open off a bad recall by Galatasaray, finding the initial pickoff, and then a super clean turn off the Baron to make sure, like you said, there was no real smite contest. Yes, Balulu ended up in the pit. The bet just made the cleanup afterwards even easier. Uh, well done here by Fudge finding the initial lockup, and then, I mean, you're, you're trapped in a pit already. If you flash out of that, then you can't get into the actual Baron pit that easily. So it was a, a tough place for the Baron seal for Mojito, and then Alive coming in late was probably looking like, hey, I'm going to try and line up this ultimate to get some cleanup kills, but Sven just shifted on top of his face and just started auto-attacking him. I've seen a lot of melee Ezreal today. Uh, <laughs> I guess when you're, like, uh, you know, doing 3,500 damage a team fight, the Blabber, massively overperforming. Uh, also having to smite the Baron is pretty impressive with a little bit of split attention. But yeah, 6, 1, and 7 here on Ezreal. You can afford to get a little loose with the aggressive arcane shifts, right? At some point, it just doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, this far ahead, not much can go wrong for Cloud9 now. Zerg Sting again under fire. Oh, goodness. 
Looking like quite the Ripple Baron power play here as Blabber's on a killing spree, just deletes one off the map. Make it two there for Blabber, as it's three dead already on the side of Galatasaray. It's Balulu trying to fight his way out once again, but it is only Crazy left alive to tell the tale of his destroyed Nexus, because Cloud9 are just rampaging through this game. Cloud9 looking to end the game, 28 minutes. Crazy's only one up, but Sven wants some more blood. More shifting onto the enemies, Sven. Make it known that he hasn't misplaced his keys, unlike his teammate Perks. <laughs> but Perks, looking good at the end of it all. 5 1 and 8 at the Infinity Edge, but it doesn't creep building, so I don't think it mattered. Cloud9 still undefeated, 3 0 now here in Worlds 2021. Yeah, one or two mistakes in that game for Cloud9, but for the most part, stomped it. Uh, you know, you would not know looking at that scoreboard that there were a couple touch and go moments throughout. And I think that does speak to the fact that Cloud9 did look very prepared in their game plan, as well as just having some individual outplays. I think, especially in the bot lane, Sven and Vulcan deserve a lot of credit. The level one prep is good. They got flashes out, and, and it looks like they're kind of firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, uh, I feel like in some ways, like Sven's stock is known, right? He is extremely successful in Europe, even if he's very early days of the play, even at you know big stages Neals, like the World Championships, days. right? I mean, someone, someone out there remembers that guy. Missed yeah. that player. Uh, but kind of shades of that here. It seems like he has been kind of on a tear recently, kind of playing himself back to form. Always been a consistent force. Uh, but I think his lane mate Vulcan is the player that I'm super excited to watch develop more and more. Because to me, Vulcan is already an international level player. You know, from which is not an easy thing, given how many quality supports there are in the world. Vulcan has been consistently excellent for Cloud9, even when they were slumping in the regular season. And now here alongside Sven on the world stage, he's looking amazing. And I, I think as well for, for Blabber, a huge back bounce back performance from MSI. For a lot of people who don't watch the LCS, you might have seen that Blabber and been like, this is their MVP. This is the guy that everyone hypes up. And I think this is showing a little bit more of the angle that why NA fans are so excited about him. Uh, he, he can run over a lot of games when he gets ahead. And as you saw in that teamfight graph, you know, doing the most damage in the game. Well, if you've uh, woken up in North America, you've at least woken up to good news. Cloud9 continue to be undefeated here at the World Championships. Only one more game left to play in their best of one run. Robin, we're going to be stepping away for a commercial, but when we return, don't miss World's Cooldown. Make or break. Make it yours.